Hi, I'm Dave Brady. This is not a pipe. This is a painting of a pipe painted 100 years ago by René Marguerite. Photography was 100 years old at that time. A photograph of a pipe is also not a pipe. Maybe the photograph is more closely related to the pipe than the painting, though. A photograph is an image automatically created by the thing itself without interpretation by the artist. Maybe the artist adds something. Maybe there's a feel to the pipe or a scratch that's important or something about the pipe that makes the photograph, the painting, more the thing than a photograph. What if instead of the artist, we allow a computer to interpret the thing? Maybe through computation, we can capture more about the thing, what it is in three dimensions, what its colors are, what its real texture is, get more information than a person could ever see. Maybe the measurement of the thing defines the thing. Without measurement, what is a pipe? But we're not here to discuss philosophy. We're just here to discuss how to use math and physics to measure, represent, and describe objects. Let's get started. Computational imaging. Episode one, what is computational imaging? This series of videos is uh, in support of the textbook Computational Optical Imaging, published in 2025 by SPIE Press. The text uh, shows simulations uh, using uh, Python uh, that are written in Jupyter Notebooks that are online on GitHub at the Arizona Camera Lab GitHub site under the Computational Imaging Repository. The community around the text uh, also has a web page at imaging.computer where additional resources may be found. This lecture covers the first chapter of the computational optical imaging. Subsequent lectures will follow uh, closely through the uh, sections of the, of the textbook. So let's start by saying, what is an image? Uh, we've looked already at an image of, of a pipe. Uh, here's another image uh, of a pipe. Um, now here, this is something we can see. So we say, well, an image is, I know, I know an image when, when I look at one. Um, and of course, before uh, the digital age, uh, images were physical objects that might be printed on, on a photographic sheet or so on. Um, but for our purposes, an image is going to be an array of numbers uh, like this. So here we have an array of numbers. The numbers in this case are between uh, 0 and 255, which is typical of 8-bit uh, image data. Um, and you can see the outline of the pipe in the numbers here because uh, most of this image is white, and so the, the signal value is 255. And where there is uh, the outline of the pipe, the image values are less associated with black pixels. And those smaller uh, values don't fill the uh, columns as well, so we see the outline of the pipe. This is important because, uh, as we recognize here, um, the image data itself, if we look at the array of data, we, we, can, we can see the image, and that's because images are ordered lists. In this case, uh, the ordered list would be uh, parameterized fij with uh, the f11 value being up here at the upper upper left and next to it would be f112 and so on. So this would be the j axis and this would be the i axis. And the image data is not just an array of numbers then, it's an array of numbers where there's a sense of which numbers are adjacent to other numbers. So images are distributions over an underlying space that are associated with this, this ordered list. So our job is to um, figure out how to create images. In computational imaging, we're creating images of remote objects. That's the process of, of imaging. So uh, the remote object is a distribution over a space, in this case, uh, over a three-dimensional space, X, Y, and Z. Uh, we can see this, uh, the, the, this teddy bear. Um, and at each point in the teddy bear, there's a density. And so that's described by this distribution function f of x, y, and z. In general, um, objects uh, could be in much higher dimensions than just three. We could have time, spectra, luminance, and other factors that could increase the dimensionality of the image. But then we measure the image after it interacts with some, when we measure the object after it interacts with the radiation field. So the process of imaging is to figure out how the object uh, transmits its information or encodes its distribution onto the radiation field, how the radiation field is transformed by optical elements and then uh, recorded onto, onto a sensor. 
And so this process of the interaction of the object with the radiation field and the transformation of the field onto sensor data is described by what we call a forward model. So in this case, uh, g of x would be the remote measured data uh, for the object distribution f of x, and h of x, x prime is the impulse response. It's the response of the imaging system to the density at position x prime, and we call this the, the forward model. Now, this type of forward model we, we often create to describe a physical system, but it's not useful to us computationally because we don't, we don't have in computation uh, continuous values. What we have is discrete values, and so we need to transform this continuous forward model describing how the remote object distribution turns into a image space distribution with a discrete forward model. And now in this case, f is an array of numbers. Um, G is also a discrete array of numbers. H is the discrete version of the forward model. It's a matrix that multiplies the object values uh, by some weights that then transform it into uh, measurement values. This is a linear forward model, and in most cases, our imaging systems will be described by such models, although we will have occasion to discuss uh, quadratic transformations when we talk about coherent systems. And we've shown here this uh, value n, which is the noise that occurs in this process and is something that we'll, we'll also discuss uh, in some detail. So the process of imaging, first of all, is to understand and create this kind of forward model describing the relationship between the object values and the measurement values. But then the process of imaging is to invert this, to take the measurement values and estimate the image. So computational imaging consists of estimation of f giving g, which is what we'll call uh, the inverse problem. OK, so that's what imaging is. What we're going to go through in these discussions uh, through, through these uh, videos uh, is a consideration of how one designs an imaging system. So uh, we're going to look at computational imaging system design. Um, the designer uh, addresses three basic questions. Um, so it's not generally possible just to directly measure the, the object. We, we don't have like a densitometer that we can reach into and get the object density at every point. Uh, in space, the, the measurements occur through the physical process of the object data information being encoded onto the optical field and then the optical field being encoded into to measurements. So when we make a measurement, um, measuring one thing can often preclude measuring something else. For example, uh, we'll set the focal state of our system at one value or we set the exposure or we set the field of view or the, or the viewpoint in the system at some value. And setting those values in our sensor uh, may preclude making uh, other measurements. And so we have uh, finite resources available for making measurements. And uh, we have uh, you know, finite time and finite cost and finite volume. So we need to choose under those kind of constraints what one should measure. In this case, uh, we could say we want to know what's under these rocks and we need to choose uh, an algorithm for picking up the rocks to look at what's underneath. But the general problem of measurement for imaging systems obviously will be much more complicated where we have many, many parameters we can set in the measurement system, and we choose what to measure. The second thing is, after we've made measurements, we need to recognize that the, the measurements are not the object, as we saw with the, you know, the, the pipe, the image is not, not the object. But in general, in an imaging system, and the kind of imaging systems we work with in computational image, the measurements may not uh, have any resemblance to the object. They may not even be an image themselves, that the measurements may not be an ordered list, so that uh, uh, it may not be possible to see the image, see the object uh, in, in the measurements themselves. After we've made the measurements, um, there's no reason for us just to keep the data that we have in the form of the measurements themselves. Ultimately, we're going to want to estimate the object from the measurement, but we might want to estimate the object in ways that tell us information about the object, that identify the object, or that uh, include um, many diff disparate physical factors like object's color at different, different spectral values or the object's reflectance or the object's polarization. So we have a lot of different data about the object. That data could be redundant and that data could be contradictory. Uh, that data has many, many forms. And so the computational imaging system has a, a, a job that really wasn't present in analog photography, like in analog imaging systems one records the analog distribution and that, that's the image. But in a computational system, we've made some measurements. That's then data that we need to transform into some kind of database that we can use to mine and describe the object. So how that data is represented, how we describe the uh, object, 
in our internal state uh, is, is a central challenge of computational imaging system design. So our second question is, how should one represent the measurements? The third design aspect is how to display the information. So here uh, we've looked under a rock and we find this golden key. That's obviously an important part of, inf of our information. And so now we may want to just say, well, we found a golden key and that's our, that's our visualization of the data. But we may want to, as is shown here, show an image of, of what we've uh, created. Um, the, in, in contrast with an analog system, we don't have just one image. We have a set of data that we've stored and we can create numerous different visualizations and different ways to understand uh, the, the, uh, the world from our data. So we have these three challenges in general in computational imaging system design. What to measure, how to represent the measurements, and then how to turn the measurements back into visualizations or information. The designer's job is to jointly optimize the answers to these three questions against whatever system resources are available and create something that would be measurably the best imaging system possible. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you've all uh, are familiar with photography say well I know how to take a picture I know how cameras work so you say what's so hard here what's the challenge of imaging system design why is this hard the reason fundamentally that it's hard is that one cannot directly map the object distribution onto measurements so that the measurements cannot be a representation of the of the object and the fundamental reason for that is that objects are almost always multi-dimensional but measurements are almost always two-dimensional so we have a, in this case a 3d object distribution but the object can move and the object will have color and the object will have polarization and the object will have illuminance there's a lot more information about the object than can be represented in the two-dimensional measurement space so this is both the challenge and the opportunity of computational imaging systems because conventional photography, uh, for example, uh, just uh, forms a 2D image and you think of the 2D image of the pipe, for example, as a representation of the pipe, even though you know that the pipe is three dimensional. But with computational imaging systems, we can estimate the object itself. We can take measurement data and create an estimate of the, of the true object distribution. So we have to design measurements to do this but we have to recognize that it's not possible for the measurements to map one-to-one -one onto the object distribution points itself because the object is higher dimension than the measurements. What do we get for doing this? What, what's, what's the advantage of using computational imaging? What are we trying to do in the end? Well, um, we get a lot of different things. We get to uh, estimate the object, not the, uh, not the measurement. Uh, we can see through obscuration. Uh, we can see with uh, greater resolution than we can see with our own to see with our own eyes. We can capture a lot of data. We can capture terabytes of data, and we can really understand the world. The preface to the textbook uh, begins with a story uh, that talks about uh, uh, the introduction of Mantis cameras in in Beijing, and this is a video that's described in the preface overlooking the the Beijing International Airport in 2017. And as you see, as you zoom in, uh, you see planes. The planes were were not visible. Uh, in the uh, original zoomed out snapshot, but we can zoom in and capture data at much greater resolution than, than what your eye would see. That You can keep zooming, you see a couple planes there in the sky that weren't visible. As we continue to zoom, you see this is an infinitely rich database that far off in the distance, probably maybe 20 kilometers away, there's this another plane in the sky. And as we come back out and those planes disappear because uh, the resolution of the single screen is not possible to see those things, uh, we can see a plane come into land. The squares here that you see in the image, those are different cameras. So this is a stitched image, and here as a plane crosses a boundary, you can see the, there's, there's a discontinuity in the images because there's a little timing jitter uh, between the stitched images. So this is a rich, rich data set that you could mine to capture everything that's possible to see in a city. This is the kind of thing that we're going to be able to do. We're going to capture the world in all of its glory by studying computational imaging.